This is an oddly stylish and actually fairly useful device. Now, I saw this in AliExpress and I threw it into a bundle deal and I didn't really know what it was, but uh, now I've worked out what it does. Let's explore. So to describe, this thing plugs into a USB-C port, although there are battery-operated versions, which explains this strangely pointless legacy button. And on the end of it, at the tip, is a tiny little surface mount inductor to detect alternating magnetic fields. If I get a test subject here, and this is a little boost circuit, it's normally cased up with a little cover like that, and it uh, plugs into USB port and boosts up to 12 volts, and I'm using it in this instance just to power a short section of LED strip just to give it a load. Now, if I press the button on this, which is a bit fumbly, and hold the inductor at the tip in the vicinity of this in oscillating inductor, you can see that it's lighting up because it's detecting the stray magnetic field, the AC magnetic field from that inductor. If the inductor was not on, if it was off, like this, it doesn't do anything. Or if the circuitry itself was faulty and the inductor wasn't running, then the LED would not light. It only lights if it's got an active pulsed inductor, as in the step up and step down circuits used on motherboards for creating all the different power supplies. OK, let's take a look at the circuit board. Uh, I've already done the work in that, so I can bring it in straight away. So this circuitry has some major oddities to it, like someone's copied it without really knowing what they were doing, or they've just shuffled and changed it. I'm not sure if this is genuine YCS. But there is the USB-C port. There are the two very important 5.1K resistors that tell smart chargers just to stick out 5 volts to it. There's a button, but all the button switches to the LED, the rest of the circuit just stays active all the time. I'm guessing that in the battery operated version, the the button would have just basically disconnected the battery. Uh, they sh could have just got rid of the uh, button in this application because it's got a permanent supply of the USB-C and the circuitry is active all the time anyway. It has a couple of transistors as amplifiers, a little charge pump, and it's got the LED with the capacitor across it to even out the pulses and make it brighter. But as you'll see in the circuitry, that's a bit strange. So let's bring in the schematic. And here is the schematic. So there's the USB-C port. It's got the positive and negative. It's also got the two uh, CC pins connected that actually uh, enable the output because it senses these resistors and detects there is a load connected. The circuitry is based on this transistor, which is normally slightly biased on by this high value one mega ohm resistor. So when it turns on, it pulls down the end of this resistor and effectively because that's zero volts, no current flows through the diode and therefore that transistor is not turned on and the LED is off. Notice the position of the switch. It really is just for the LED. They could have put it... If if it was the battery operated version, they'd have had the switch over here probably. That's strange that they even bothered with that at all. Personally, I'd just bridge it out. It seems pointless. Anyway, when you hold the inductor, and I measured it in circuit as 2 microhenry, so probably 2.2 microhenry with tolerance, but that was in circuit. It may have been finding a path through this capacitor because they often test the inductors with like alternating current to actually, or a sort of pulses just to actually uh, test the inductive value is the best way to describe that. Well, I really botched that bit up, but the testers do apply AC across the inductor usually, as they do with the capacitors, the charge-discharge. But um, the little inductor here, when it detects a field, it couples via this capacitor, and this is a very weak pull-up, but it's enough to override that if the signal's high enough and it starts oscillating the base of this transistor. That transistor then turns on and off. It'd normally just be on all the time, but because of that, it turns off. And when it does turn off, current flows through this diode, through this seemingly utterly pointless resistor here, and charges this capacitor. Because keep in mind that the current path to charge that would normally be through this 5.1K, and then the diode and over to that. Strange that they added another one. If anything, they could have added that in between the capacitor and the base, but they didn't. Um, but what that does, it, it turns on the transistor, but it also potentially charges up the capacitor. That's where the resistor would have been handy because the transistor will try and just dump that straight away. It will try and clamp that down to about 0.6 volts in the base. But there's a 2K2, which is really high value resistor, and then they've put a little capacitor across the LED, presumably to make it look a little bit brighter in case it's pulsing on and off, which should have been not necessary because that should have done it. It's very strange. 
I don't know if it's the original design or if someone's copied it and they've done weird things. But there we have it. In a nutshell, when this uh, picks up that uh, high-frequency oscillation of an active inductor, it gets coupled via capacitor, turns this transistor on and off, and charge pumps via this diode. That capacitor turns on the transistor and the LED lights. And that is it. It's a very stylish little unit. Brightens the image up just a tad. But there we have it. There's many forms of this. The little battery operated version, to be honest, is probably more useful than the inductive one, unless you spend a lot of time probing around on circuit boards. Um, but uh, this is the USB-C version with the strangely pointless button. The temptation would be just to remove the button and bridge it out and maybe even put some heat shrink sleeving across this because it's got these symbols like uh, observe anti-static precautions, but What's the point when, you know, you're fingering a bare circuit board? Very strange. But a very useful tool for probing about on the uh, same motherboards or controllers and finding where an inductor might not actually be running because the control circuitry around that has failed in some way. But that's it. Interesting little device. Very useful.